Hi everybody! Politicians, investors, economists tend to analyse yield curves as a forward-looking indicator to the health and status of an economy. Before I start this video, it's important that you've watched my previous video on government bonds, borrowing and yields to understand the theory in this. Yield curves represent the relationship between yields on bonds, I'm going to focus on government bonds in this video, and the time. And the simple relationship looks like this, a simple yield curve looks like that. We can call that a normal yield curve, which may represent the relationship between yields and time on UK government bonds. So this could be for UK gilts. Upward sloping, I mean the actual shape can vary, but basically upward sloping. And why is that? Well, the two reasons why. Remember, UK government bonds, in terms of maturity dates, can vary. You can buy one year, five year, ten year, twenty year, thirty year government bonds. The longer you tie your money up, the uh, more you buy long term government bonds, the more you expect the rate of return to be. The longer you tie your money up, the more you want the rate of return to be. The more you demand a higher yield. So for longer term government bonds, the greater the yield is going to be for that reason. Very simple. But the second reason is to hedge against inflation. Inflation erodes the value of an investment. So the longer you're tying your money up, the more you are at risk of inflation eroding the value of your investment. So again, you will demand a higher yield to protect against investment in the long term. Two reasons why we tend to see an upward sloping relationship between yields and time. Yield curves are also good because you can compare yields on bonds between different countries. So this could be the yield curve for UK government bonds, whereas on the same diagram, maybe we can map the yields on Greek government bonds. So this could well be the yield curve for Greek government bonds. And the distance between the two, the vertical distance between the two, represent the spread, the difference in yield between two government bonds. It's a bit of uh, jargon right there. So if you ever hear investors saying, oh, the spread of Greek government bonds over UK government bonds is whatever percent, well then you know what it means. So Greek government bonds at the moment are giving much higher yield, reflecting the fact that the Greek government is a much more risky investment than the UK government at the moment. Okay, but the spread is just the difference in yields between two government bonds. It doesn't just have to be government bonds here, it could be corporate bonds, so it could be either a Vodafone bond here and a Tesco bond, looking at the spread between the two. Um, one other kind of interesting thing to look at is when this yield curve can actually show a very different shape. This is a normal shape, this represents a healthy economy, an economy you'd expect that is doing pretty well. Um, what about when the yield curve changes shape and becomes inverted? That could be a sign of impending doom for an economy. Before I look at that, let's just recap the relationship between the price of a bond and the yield on a bond. Well, if the price of a bond goes up, the opposite is going to happen to the yield on that bond. There is an inverse relationship between the price of a bond and the yield of a bond. I explained that in my previous video. Watch that if you're not sure. Whereas if the price of a bond goes down, then the yield on that bond will go up. And remember what determines the price of a government bond. It's just the demand and supply for it. So if demand is very high for whatever government bond, it's going to raise its price and reduce the yield. Whereas if demand is very low, the price will go down, the yield will actually go up. So, under what circumstances might there be an inverted yield curve? Well, it would start with investors being very concerned about a future economic crisis. Let's say the central bank are either about to or have just slashed interest rates. They've slashed rates not because they want to try and prop up inflation. They've slashed rates because they themselves are concerned about potential economic crisis in the country, about very low rates of growth going forward, about high rates of unemployment. That's why they've slashed interest rates. If investors think that's the reason why they've, they've slashed rates, they're going to think about what the best place is to actually invest, where the best place is to actually gain a return on their investments, a return on their money. And they're going to think, right, interest rates have just been slashed or are about to be slashed. Therefore, the rates of return on other assets in the economy are likely to also fall. A lot of rates of returns are linked to the, uh, the central bank rate. And if that's slashed, then chances are rates of return on other investments will also fall. Therefore, if investors want a good rate of return, they might look at government bonds and think, oh, long-term government bonds are offering an excellent yield, an excellent interest rate, uh, relative to other assets out there in the economy. 
And if investors think that the risk of inflation is low because the central bank have slashed rates, not because they're concerned about inflation, not because they're, they're trying to prop up inflation in the future, they've slashed them because of an impending crisis, then actually buying long-term government bonds might be a very good investment. A relatively low risk of inflation, they think, and a very good rate of return relative to other assets in the economy. So if lots of investors buy these longer-term government bonds, fearing economic crisis, what's that going to do to the price of long-term government bonds? It's going to increase the price as more demand is put on them. And that's going to reduce the yield on these long-term government bonds. And if lots of investors do this, fearing economic crisis, you might get a yield curve that goes the opposite way, that becomes inverted, downward sloping, looking something like that. And as an economist, if you see a yield curve which is downward sloping like that, that could well be a sign of impending economic doom in the country. It could be the sign of investors fearing economic crisis, pouring their money into long-term government bonds, thinking that's going to be a very good investment relative to other investments that are, are giving a lower rate of return, given the fact that the central bank has slashed rates. And therefore, long-term government bonds are actually going to, in the end, give a lower yield because the demand for them is so high. So an inverted yield curve like this could be a sign of expected economic crisis by investors in the economy. In 2009, in the UK, the yield curve became inverted, downward sloping like this, a sign that in the future economic crisis was like, likely to occur, exactly what we're seeing. So uh, yield curves could well be a forward indicator of the state and health of an economy. However, you've got to be cautious, as an economist, you've got to be cautious. Is this yield curve inverted because of potential economic crisis? Or is it inverted simply just to reflect demand and supply for this given bond? Maybe long-term government bonds are in very short supply, and anything that's in short supply will see the price of that bond rise and therefore the yield fall. So maybe it's just reflected of demand and supply for this, uh, uh, of, this, uh, of this government bond. It might not be a sign of impending doom. Anyway, guys, that's uh, Yield Curves done. Interesting stuff. Hope you found that uh, stimulating. See you all next time.